Hello and welcome to this edition of Designing Spaces, the show that's all about you and your space, your home and surroundings. I'm Debbie Murray. And I'm David Jones. You know, spring, just a couple of weeks away. Time to get started on some spring cleaning. And not just spring cleaning, but how about some spring projects to make sure the household is running smooth and have it looking its best. That's right. We got you covered on today's show, starting down in the basement and working right out into the yard. A well-oiled machine, literally, as you'll see. That's right. And speaking of yards, we have some advice and some tips on how to make your backyard a beautiful green oasis. That and a lot more. So stick around and see it all right here on Designing Spaces. All right, time now for landscaping. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Well, we took the first steps in creating a green oasis, you know, to bond with nature. With summer not far off, it's time to think about your yard, your lawn, your landscaping, your gardening plants. To help you create your oasis, you're going to need some helpful supplies to get the ball rolling and let nature take its course. Today, we're the homeowners, Laura and Eric, and we're going to help them create their own green sanctuary. So, are you guys ready? Yeah. We're ready. So tell me, what kind of ideas do you have for the yard? Michelle, we'd like to improve the lawn. We'd like to eliminate the bald spots, the yellow spots. We're looking for a more greener, fuller, vibrant lawn. What about you? Well, I'm a gardener. I have a vegetable garden, but I've been having a lot of problems with bugs this year, particularly ants. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd also like to um, bring a little bit more of a cheerful feeling to the yard, but still relaxing. Well, it sounds like you both definitely have a vision, and we do have an expert with us today, so why don't we get going and see what he has to say. I'm here today with Kevin Smith from Central Garden and Pet, who brought along a few supplies to help us create, beautify, and protect our yard. Welcome to Designing Spaces, Kevin. Thanks, Michelle. It's great to be here. I'm glad to have you. So tell us, what are we going to start with today? I think we should start with the lawn. It's sort of the backdrop that everything else revolves around. So let's make sure the lawn is nice and green before we get started. That makes sense, and it sounds great. Okay. So let's do it. Let's do it. So Kevin, tell me, how do we keep our lawn healthy? Well, it's really good to start with the basics, and that's a good quality grass seed. Because if you don't start with a really good quality grass seed, you're probably not going to be happy with the results you have later. So I brought something with me today to show you. It's Pennington Smart Seed, and it is the latest technology in grass seed. And I bet you didn't know there was technology in grass seed. I know. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and what it is, we've got plant breeders who are actually selecting different varieties of grass to make it better than the last generation. And when I say better, I mean better drought tolerance, better disease and insect resistance, even finer blade texture so it's soft to walk on, and better color. So all of that is in this bag. Plus, it has another advantage. It's called the myco advantage. And the myco advantage makes stronger roots and able to absorb nutrients more efficiently, including water, which will be good for you because you can save up to 30% on the amount of water that you have to put on your lawn. So I brought a product with me today called Ironite, and it's a mineral supplement, different than fertilizing. It's got nine minerals plus iron, and iron is really good for greening up your lawn. If you see your lawn turning a little bit yellow, uh, a light green, you don't like the looks of that, Ironite is a really good product to apply. This is a beautiful garden, huh? It's a great garden. You've done a good job. Thank you. We need to protect it, though. You know, I mean, you don't want anything to invade this garden that's going to eat the harvest that you're working so hard for. And you've got thousands of insects in this backyard that really want to harvest it before you do. So let's try to keep those out of there. I brought a product for you today that you're probably familiar with. It's Seven. Seven's been around forever. It's been around for generations. And the great thing about Seven is you don't have to be concerned about what insect do I have in my backyard? Because it covers such a broad array of insects. The really cool thing about Seven that's different than a lot of other insect control products is it's non-systemic. What it's saying is it's not going into the plant, it's staying on the outside of the plant. 
So this nice squash plant, you can protect it, just a light dusting of the seven over the top of the leaves. And then when the insects walk through it or try to take a bite out of it, they're done. So if you've got a pasta dish that you want to do, sprinkle it on your tomatoes and then right up to the point of harvest, you can wash that off and still be able to eat it. So I've got to caution you though, just like with any other insect control, make sure to read and follow the label. So while we're in the garden and we've protected our vegetable plants here with seven, what I'd like to do is protect the perimeter of your garden also. Now let me ask you a question. Do you know what the number one pest in the United States is? Anybody? Anybody? A guess? An yeah. ant, I guess. An ant, oh, exactly. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> so what we want to do is protect from the number one pest on the outside of this garden so that they don't become a problem inside your garden. So we can do that with this product called Amdro Ant Block. Now a lot of people know Amdro, if they're from the southeast, as a fire ant bait. This covers any type of ant, and it's really easy to use. All you're going to do is you're going to sprinkle around the perimeter of your garden, and it's going to have a nice wide band that's going to keep ants out. So my suggestion to you is let's go to the perimeter of your house, sprinkle a band of protection against ants around the perimeter of your house with Amdro Ant Block. That's a great idea. Let's go do it. Well, Kevin, it seems that we obviously got the garden in order. It's looking beautiful. Yep. Now, what do you suggest for the yard? What do you think that we could do to really bring this garden to life? Let's put some feeders up in your backyard, all around your backyard. I think it'll add idea. a lot of entertainment to your yard. I brought a Cedar Works feeder here. Oh, that's beautiful. It's made by the Amish here in the United States. It is a beautiful feeder. And the nice thing about cedar is you can put it up as a nature lover and feel good about it because cedar is being reforested faster than it's being harvested. So you're never going to run out of cedar. So let's fill one of these up. Let's fill several of them up and put them all around the backyard. Let's put a good quality seed in. Something here from Pennington. This Pennington Ultra, you can pour that in and feel really good about it because the birds aren't going to be picking through it trying to find a seed they like. Everything in it is good. Hence the name Ultra. Well, I really love this. I think it's a fabulous final touch. And I love the idea of entertaining your family and friends with songbirds. What do you guys think? This is great. We spend a lot of time in our backyard. Yeah, we uh, have coffee out here every morning and we can listen to the birds singing. Definitely. <laughs> well, I love it too. So, Kevin, I would like a birdhouse. Can you tell us where we can get the birdhouses and also all the supplies we use in the yard today? Well, they're very popular products, so you can really ask for them at any lawn and garden retailer or go to central.com if you want more information on these products. Great, and I know that we're also going to have a link to your website on our website where you can also see this portion of the show again at designingspaces.tv. And I I'd like to thank Kevin from Central Garden and Pet for being here today, making this all possible. And I'd also like to thank our homeowners, Eric and Laura, for allowing us into their yard today and giving us a great example of how to make your yard look perfect. For Designing Spaces, I'm Michelle Russo. All right, what do you say we start in the basement and work our way up? Sounds good. You know, with spring comes rain, and a lot of times the basements carry some of that water, and basement flooding can be disastrous, especially combined with power failure. That's right, but one leader in the pump industry has an easy solution. In fact, here's Heather Heron in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Watch this. The thought of flooding strikes fear into the hearts of every homeowner with a basement. Not only may stored valuables be lost, but structural damage to walls and supports could result in expensive repairs. The best way to prevent flooding is with a sump pump, but options are wide and very confusing. Also, sump pumps run with electric power, so if there's a power failure at the same time as flooding, well, you get the picture. Today, Designing Spaces goes down into the basement with a leading expert in sump pumps to look at what you can do to keep basement flooding under control. Everything is fine right now, but a serious storm could cause a power failure and lots of water filling the sump pit and then placing this entire floor underwater. Selecting the right sump pump will eliminate the flooding problem and give the homeowner peace of mind. To help us in the world of sump pumps, we have John Sparks, National Account Manager for Star Water Systems, a manufacturer of water pumping systems since 1866. Well, John, it's good to know we're in good hands now. But I have to ask, what about those pumps back in 1866? Well, Star Water System started out building windmills and good old-fashioned hand pumps. 
but I wasn't around back then. Today, John brought along several different types of sump pumps. Well, it's good to know we have your modern expertise now. Well, thank you, and it's good to be here. Now, you brought with you some examples. This was the original, older version. That is correct, and it's this is what is called a column or pedestal sump pump. As you can see, the electrical motor sits on top of a very long shaft, which then connects to an impeller, which pushes the water up and out of your basement. But what about heavily flooded basements? When using the submersible sump pump, it can actually be completely submerged in water. Now show us the newer version, the one that can be submersed in water. Well, this is a submersible sump pump, and it is designed so that the motor is encased completely inside the sump pump. As you can see, it's surrounded by a cast iron housing. The electrical current is hermetically sealed so that as the electrical current comes in and out of the pump, it won't stop the pump from running. This device here is what turns it on and off. That is correct. This is a float switch. This is a vertical float switch. As the water rises in the pit, the float switch comes on and reaches the top. It makes the electrical connection, turns the pump on, and as the water recedes, the float goes down and it turns the pump off. And this entire piece can go underwater? Yes, it can. It completely submerged and it's very efficient. There's a high probability for power failure during floods. That's where a backup system is important to have. Many insurance companies won't cover basement flood damages, so a certain amount of redundancy is needed to truly be safe. Traditionally, batteries power the backup pump once electricity is unavailable. This is a battery backup system. This is your primary pump. This would be your battery backup, your secondary pump. When the power goes out, this pump will not operate. So we have a second switch that operates the pump as this float comes up. It'll turn this pump on and off, which is run by this battery. How long does the charge on the battery last? Well, batteries are only good for a charge of about eight hours. The batteries traditionally have to be kept charged up. We do supply a charger that comes with the pump. But when the event of a power failure, the pump will only run for approximately eight hours. And when the battery is, is discharged, the pump can no longer operate. So if the power's out for longer, spare batteries can come in handy. However, there is a simpler solution. Running water, as provided by the local municipality, can also be an option. This is the HomeGuard Optima. It's a high-capacity, high-efficiency backup system with no electricity required. It has a small footprint and removes two gallons for every gallon of water used. This is our all-new HomeGuard Optima. It's a water-driven backup sump pump. And how does it work? It works off of your municipal water supply. As your water supply comes through, it goes through what is called a nozzle venturi system. And what that does, it creates vacuum in the drop pipe. So for every one gallon of city water that you use, it will draw almost two gallons of water out of your pit. Now you mentioned the city water. That what if you're not in a municipality and you have a well? On a well system, you're generally operating off of an electrical pump. So that would not work unless you had a generator supplying power to your well pump all the time. So this would be primary for city? City waters only, yes. The Home Guard Optima is ready to go 24 hours a day. No electricity, no batteries. Because it does require running water and is efficient, it should really be used primarily for backup purposes. So explain to me how this all works. Okay. Well, it's very simple. What I've done here is I've taken my primary sump pump, I've added my discharge pipe to it. I've taken the Home Guard Optima out of the box. I've connected it here very simply with our fittings here. And I've added a discharge pipe to it. And then the only thing I have to do left after that is connect my city water supply to this very easy push on connection. And then this entire unit would actually go down into the sump pit. That would go down into the pit and then you'd make your final connections. John, if people want to find out more information about the Optima or about the submersible pump, where do they get that? You can go to Star Retailers across North America or visit us at StarWaterSystems.com. John, thank you so much for all of that important information. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having us.
And if you'd like to find out more information, you can also go to our website, designingspaces.tv. There you'll see streaming video of this segment. We'll also have a link for you to the Star Water Systems website. Again, thank you to John Sparks and Star Water Systems. For Designing Spaces, I'm Heather Heron. All right, time to get all things mechanical back in working order. We're talking squeaky hinges, jammed up gardening tools, dried out bicycle chains. You know what we need? Penetrating oil. The cures for those squeaky door hinges and jammed padlocks are made from chemicals which can be hazardous to children and pets. But don't worry, Designing Spaces is on it. Watch this. From the garage to the workshop to the kitchen, every house needs lubricating oil for those simple mechanical items that suddenly stick, squeak, bind, or jam. Most lubricating oils contain harmful chemicals. We're here at a typical American home with Dave Babix from Plues, the manufacturers of this very special lubricating oil. Hi, Dave. Welcome back to Designing Spaces. Hi, Andy. Good to be back. So, Dave, why don't you tell us what makes this lubricating oil so special? Okay, this is called UltraLube Multipurpose Lubricant and Penetrant. But unlike petroleum based products, it's safer for kids and pets around the house because it contains no zinc and no chlorine. So, that sounds really interesting. What is it made out of? made out of vegetable oils. I know that sounds like something you use in the kitchen to cook with, but these vegetable oils actually have four times the natural lubricity of petroleum-based products. That's great. So it's basically safe to use anywhere in the house or around it. Yes, it is. It's even eco-friendly. UltraLube is made from renewable resources, crops grown right here in the U.S., and it's biodegradable, so there's nothing to contaminate the water supply. Also, great for penetrating rust, sticking parts, lubricating rollers, hinges, pins, cables, chains, windows, doors, virtually anything that sticks, squeaks, binds, or has to move smoothly. Well, it sounds wonderful. Let's go put it to the test. All right, Dave, so let's start with this gate. This gate squeaks so loud that the neighbors can hear every time you come home. Andy, that'll be easy to fix. All we have to do is spray a couple of shots of lubricant into the hinges, work it a little bit, It'll be fine. Great. Show me how it works. Let's try it out. Pretty great. No more squeaking. You ready to go to the next project? I'm ready. All right. Great. Come Let's on. take it on. Okay. We have some gardening tools here. They build up a lot of rust and crud on them. We can give it a little shot. And it works nice. smoothly again. This one looks pretty stiff too. Yeah, and it's all rusted up as well. Ultra Lube will help protect against this corroding again as well. And is it going to relieve it of some of the rust? It's going to remove some? Yes, it will. That's great. It'll take the rust off and make it work smooth again. Wow, that's fantastic. All right, so listen to this. That is making some noise. You hear that squeak? I can hear it. So you think you can handle that? I think so. Okay. We'll just spray a little bit in the hinges on each side. And we should be good to go. Should I try it out? Okay. That's amazing. And it works so fast. So we've got this stall door, and it's really sticky, and it's squeaking, as you can hear. And it's also really rusted. Do you think you can help me with this? I think we can take care of that for you, Andy. Okay, show us what you got. All right, so let's check it out. Much smoother. And the sound is completely gone. No more squeaking. Wow. UltraLube did the job. Yeah, that's pretty incredible stuff. It's also going to help prevent future corrosion. I do have one more project that I want you to try. How about a bicycle? Let's go for it. Okay, great. Okay, Dave, last but not least, we have this child's bicycle, and the chain is so rusted, I'm not even sure if it'll pedal at this point. And we've also got a kickstand that's squeaking and barely goes down. You think we can fix that? Andy, I'm sure we can fix it with a little ultra lube on there. We can work it in. It'll be fine, just like new. That's great. Wow, it's really freed it up. It's moving beautifully. It's just like new again. 
And after time, it's going to wear off some of the rust as well. The rust will go away, and it'll actually penetrate into the links to make it last. That's great. How about the kickstand? Let's give that a try. Much better. Where can our viewers find UltraLube? Eddie, they can go to our website at ultralube.com to find a retailer nearest to them. That's great. And we'll also provide a link at our website, designingspaces.tv, where you can also view this part of the show again. I'm Andy Tillis for Designing Spaces. Here on Designing Spaces, many households are tightening the belt. With the economy down, we're trimming the budget, which is all we can do to make ends meet. Well, Designing Spaces teamed up with some really good friends to help one such family. You know, if you can save a few dollars in just one area of the home, those are dollars saved for essential needs. Something that was taken for granted can now become a little blessing. Watch. Your bedroom. Your first priority here is the good night's sleep. But if possible, you also want this room to reflect your style and personality. And let's face it, those things change over time, sometimes even from season to season. But who can afford to redecorate their bedroom every few months? Well, today in Designing Spaces, we're going to show you how you can keep your bedroom decor fresh, lively, and of course, stylish. We're welcoming Cindy McKenzie, Vice President of Brand Management for Springs Global, one of the world's leading home furnishing companies, and Edward Cardamona. He's Chief Global Creative Officer for Springs Global. Edward and Cindy, welcome back to the show again. Thank you. It's Thank great you. to be it's here again. Here. It's great to have you, especially because I'm really excited to show our viewers how they can incorporate the seasons into their bedrooms. And particularly this episode, we're focusing on winter. That's right. And winter is such an important time period to really focus on. So you think about it, the days are getting shorter. Mm -hmm. There's you know more time when it's dark. You really want to think about creating that nest within your bedroom, you know, a place to uh, be cozy and sort of make your own. We like to think about wardrobe in your bedroom the way you wardrobe yourself in winter. You think about layers, quilted vests, sweaters, scarves. We think about the bedroom exactly the same way. I would love to have my bedroom reflect that, and I'm sure Diana, the homeowner, is excited to do that too. So why don't we invite her in? Great. Sounds Diana, great. come on in. Hi, Welcome Diana. to your bedroom, Diana. Hi. Yes, I'm excited <laughs> you're here. Thanks. Great. So what would you like to get out of this room? Well, our kids are grown now, and we never really put that much energy you know, and time into the room. So we would like to create an oasis, if you will, for my husband and I. So let's talk specifically about the focal point of every bedroom, the bed. It's tired. I mean, it's tired. just, it's, I hate to say this is almost about 10 years old. And wow. uh, we would just, because it's cold out now, we would just like to have something that's very warm and inviting mm -hmm. feeling, because right now it isn't. And we don't spend that much time in here. And a space for the so. two of you to really retreat to. Exactly, because we do all our reading and that type of thing uh, um, in another room, and we'd like to maybe make it more of a place that we're comfortable to come into. So let's talk about the furniture. The headboard, the side tables, very ornate and global in nature. We travel a lot. And we, we have just, uh, every time we walk into a hotel room, we have this great experience. You walk in, everything's luxurious. There's beautiful things on the walls and everything. And if, if we can, we'd like to recreate that luxurious hotel experience. Well, we have some so, great ideas for you. Okay. And I think some will be real, a little surprising with color and even flow of the bedroom. So I think you're going to be pleased. Yay. So is that okay. you telling us that you're ready to get started? I think we're ready. We're ready. All right. Okay. Well, that's your cue to exit. I'm and excited. Um, okay. We will see we you will later. Thank you magic. so much. Thank you. See you. Okay. See you later, Diana. You know, the way we think about wardrobe in the bed, we really think about it the same way when we look at our apparel. Mm -hmm. So in spring and summer, you have less layers and lighter fabrics. In fall and winter, you start to layer yourself with sweaters, vests, and jackets. So think about your bed the same way. It all begins with the comforter or the duvet, and the next layer could be a quilt or a coverlet. A third layer, if necessary, could be a woven or knit blanket. That gives you enough layers to keep you warm at night, and also enough that you can start to remove layers as the weather starts to become warm. And that's really what made the winter bed. But what's the season that follows winter? 
it's spring. So people really want that sense of optimism as they begin the new year. So with a simple removal of the coverlet, removal of the blanket, all of Spring Maid's products are fully reversible. We reverse this bed, introduce a new deck pillow, and you're ready for spring. Well, Cindy, I think we're almost done. This is the finishing touch. So let's go get Michelle and Diana. Sounds great. Edward and Cindy, I can't say enough. You guys did such an thank incredible thank job you. in this room. Thank you. Thank you. It's beautiful. The first thing when you walk in, the energy, the flow, it's just so light and airy. And then the linens, my goodness, they're beautiful. The layering, the colors, it's just gorgeous. I think Diana is going to be overwhelmed. I think we so. Hope so. Yes. Well, what do you say we call her in? Let's Sounds do it. great. Diana, come see your new room. Oh, looks like a five star resort. Welcome to Shea Diana. Yes, it's wonderful. It's so light and airy. Well, the first thing we did was we looked at the flow of the room. We moved everything out and we moved the bed to the opposite wall. So every morning you wake up to your beautiful backyard. This is it's so it's 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 the oasis I wanted. And you know, one of the things that we really wanted to address was the need for this winter bedding and the use of layering we talked about. So we've added in a blanket here and a quilt. The collection is spring made, it's called Laren. And this allows you to create the amount of warmth that you need, you know, depending on how cold it is. Right. So the colors are so light and beautiful. Unexpected, so, right? Yes. I thought I would think of darkness in the winter. And most you know? people do. But you're ready for winter, but also because Laren from Spring Made is reversible, you're also ready for spring. <gasps> wow. Oh, lovely. Two looks in one. It's lovely, beautiful. lovely. I love it. So can you let our viewers know where they can get the Spring Made products? So you can find this brand at springmade.com and Target stores nationwide. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for creating an oasis for Diana. We hope you like it. I love it. Thank you so, so much. Glad. Thank, thank you. Diana, enjoy your new bedroom. I know I will. would. Thank you. Yes, we will. Thank you. <laughs> and if you would like to see the show again or find out more information, you can visit us on designingspaces.tv, where you can also find a link to springmade.com. For Designing Spaces, I'm Michelle Russo. See you next time. All right. What do we have next? Okay, well, oh, you know what? We don't... We're out of time for today. Already? Already. Well, that means you have to watch next week. This is Designing Spaces. I'm David Jones. And I'm Debbie Marie, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show or to find out how to be part of the show, log on to designingspaces.tv. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash dspacestv or friend us on Facebook. Type in the words Designing Spaces. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.